When I say nothing, I say that with my tongue in my cheek. Of course we have stuff, stuff that nobody else can do. I just call it nothing. She grew up in an Indiana town, had a good-looking mom. She never was around, but she grew up tall and she grew up right with them Indiana boys on an Indiana night. Last Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, of course. Well, not of course. Well, maybe you know that. Maybe you don't. Uh, you don't have to know it. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, greatest hits. That's a song called uh, Mary Jane's Last Dance. Great record. Look at the time it is. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555 678. The email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. And the text messaging service, for those of you who are perhaps not as happy as you should be, is 81771. Those little f- vicious fingers will jab. Uh, Michelle writes to me on the subject of self-contentment and about the meaning of happiness. This morning on television, a fella, I think he's called Little, who used to be in Neighbours uh, way back in the 80s, he had a dog called Bouncer. Can you identify that man? Mark Little. Hello? Mark Little. Mark Little. No. What was his character name? Joe Nangle? 
Do you remember those? Did you watch Neighbours in the 80s? You must have done because your mm, daughters would have. No, I was never a soap person. No. Would you never watch it with your daughters? Your daughters, of course, would have been watching Neighbours because everybody loved Neighbours. Do you remember what? the time the fellow from Neighbours came here? Do you remember the time the fellow from Neighbours came here? Jason Donovan. No, not him. The other one. Who? The other fellow. Jason, Pete, Pete, Jason Paul, Donovan. Paul somebody. Paul's Jason Donovan was here as well, but he wasn't in this building. Yes, he was. Was he? Jason Donovan did his, his radio programme from upstairs. That's right, but that was only recently when he wasn't in Neighbours. I mean yes. when he was in Neighbours and going with Kylie. That was no, a big important time. That. No, he was never here when he was going with Kylie. I was never a Neighbours fan. But did you not watch it with your daughters? Look. Listen, you're talking to a man who has skinned a beaver. You're talking You're talking about life experience here. When daughters watch Have you ever skinned a beaver? They want to watch Have it you on ever their skinned own. it? Have you ever skinned? Ah, they do not. They do so. They do Young not. Young girls like to watch television on their own. What do you think it is? Playboy Mansion? No, of course they, they don't want to watch it on their own. They want to watch it with their parents. They do not. Talk about Kylie. The, 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 the least you're the talking one, to a man. Like, you're, I'm the first man who discovered ah. Kylie. You, I'm the... What a, no, you see, I'm angry already. It's only 20 to 11. I'm the first man who identified <sighs> Kylie Minogue's bum as a thing of wonder when nobody else noticed it. I remember getting on this programme saying... Look at Kylie Minogue's bum. It is the eighth wonder of the world. Please do not ignore You're it. You're pleased. Men started to look at her bum and then they realised and they pronounced it good. Old man. Easy pleased. That's well, a, well. Yeah. Have you ever skinned a beaver? No. Well, there you are then. I've never, I've never seen a beaver. There you are then. I've not only seen a beaver, I've skinned one. I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I think it's important that the people know that I've skinned a beaver. I've done things... Do you remember that film, uh, Blade Runner? Remember the boys about to kill... Uh, well, I was going to say Shane Harrison, but <laughs> but he's the political correspondent for the South of Ireland. Remember, they were going to kill your man. What do you call him, Harrison? Think of me, Indiana Jones. What's Ford. his name? Ford. What? Ford Harrison. Ford. Why didn't yeah. you say that? Well, Why keep him dangling? Harrison Ford. He, and then he told him all the things he'd done. Remember? I, I can't remember the exact quote now, but I've skinned a beaver. Anyway, this morning on TV is called Little well, Mark Little. Just, I'm, I'm, Joe Nangle. Joe Nangle. Joe Nangle. Is he a bald-headed man? Or maybe it's Joe Mangle. Joe, I think it's nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Wouldn't be nah, Mangle. Nah, nah. Wouldn't be Joe Mangle. Joe did you Nangle. show Emma your photograph? I did. Did yeah. you? What did you think, Emma? Did you see his photograph? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say this. Why are you laughing? Yes, why are you laughing, Emma? I've been thinking of the, the eyebrow. Just the eyebrow was very prominent. It was very prominent. It's yeah. a photograph of me taken <laughs> when I was about 19. What do you mean, why is he laughing? You know why I'm laughing. 19 years, I was about 19 years of age. <laughs> and it's me and a group of friends in a bar before we went to a dance. And it's, it's featuring in a book shortly. And I have to say, that may I, look, may I say that you all looked a picture of innocence? Yes, and we were. And that was before you threw stones. Janet said we were all looked very clean. That's before you were on top of the Roswell Flats throwing sinks on top of the army. <laughs> Is that before that she or after? I was very, very clean. Looking. That's before you became politically aware. <laughs> did you think he was clean? No, Janet did. Janet? Janet would say that anyway. Anyway, Mark Little used to be in Neighbours way There's back in the 80s. There was nothing on the TV last night. Was there not? I stayed in last night. There was the TV. Did you not watch Dennis night. Murray's programme? I missed it. I taped it. I'm going to watch it. I, I didn't want to say this, but you've dragged this out of me. I was yeah. disappointed. You started talking about I television. I was disappointed in it. Uh, Dennis I Murray, like, it's a three, it's a three-parter. I like Dennis Murray ever so much. Yeah, so do I. That's why I'm going to watch it tonight. Is it? Is it is not great? tonight again? It's a three-part. No, I recorded it. Oh, so I, <laughs> so I can watch it again. But not everybody has to watch it again. I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. I, I use my Sky Plus. It's a wonderful thing for a man who's skinned a beaver. Have you ever skinned anything? I plucked a chicken. That's not the same thing. Have you ever took the innards out of a turkey? A hove out of a chicken? Chicken? Not yeah. a turkey, though. Only a think... man takes innards out of a turkey. Any think... pussy can take innards out of a chicken. I've skinned a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> a beaver has teeth like Esther Ranson. Did Is you that know that? So? No. Oh, yes, well, I would imagine right. so. Sure, it cuts down trees. And as soon as I saw the beaver, I went, oh, my God, Esther Ranson lives. Mm. Anyway, the fellow who worked in Neighbours was on TV this morning. He was telling a couple that they had just won a holiday in Australia. The woman had a lovely little baby on her knee. He showed a video of all the different places in Australia that they'd be visiting. Then he turned to them and asked, So how do you feel about that? What do you think the wife said? Oh, that's great. We never have any luck whatsoever at all. I shouted at the TV. What's that in your knee, love? That wee baby, what's that in your knee? 
Is that not luck? Do you not appreciate that? So much for appreciating the miracle of birth. People don't realise the miracle of birth. <clears throat> Mr Anderson, can you please ask Geordie if there is such a bird species as a bog bluter? Have you heard doubt, of this? I would doubt that very much. I would much, doubt that you? very much indeed. A bluter. Now, bluter is a, a, an Ulster Scots word. Now, you would say a bluter up the arse. Would no, you say I was, that? No, you would no, say... No, a stever up the No, arse. I would say boot, bluter. Bitter. A bluter. bluter. What's a bluter? I don't know. There was a man lived in our street and had a nickname, and that's who he was called, Bluter. Well, no, Bluter has a specific meaning. Yeah, but there was a time when you would describe a drunk man as being Blutered. Blutered? I was Blutered last night. Absolutely. Uh, but mm. Blutered singular? Blutter. A Blutered present tense? Blutter. Uh, no, a noun? Blutter? A Blutter? Blutter. See, I don't know no. what that means. I got Blutter. I had a, he had an awful Blutter up the field. No, but that's not Blutter. No, bitter. That's a blarge. No, you no. Uh, there's you blarge, a blarge. If you get a football and you kick it really hard, that's a you blarge it. Yes. Without any sense of direction it, or skill. That was one of the rules when you were playing football. As no blarging. No blarging. That's yes, a man who no runs at a ball and you weren't allowed to tow the ball either. No, a blarge is a man who runs at a ball and kicks it very, very hard in yes. no specific direction, but hoping to hurt somebody yes. over the rebound. Yes. That's a blarger. Yes. That's the fellow who kicks the ball two yards from you and hits you in the fork. Many's a goal was disallowed because it was blarge. No. Yes. A, bo- a goal is not disallowed because it's blurs. It yes, doesn't it matter is. how. Doesn't matter how yes. a man. It doesn't matter how a man. Doesn't matter how a man gets a ball into a net as long as he doesn't use his hand. If you can, you can blarge into a net because that is a successful no, blarge. No. A blarge is a, a, a an intentional, a harmful thing. No, if you were if you were closing in, if it's just you and the goalkeeper, and 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 you had uh, this is a time when you had to coach down when you're playing on this. Uh, That's not real feet. football. That's what I'm talking about. That period of time, but t- a period of innocence, and you put the and it was just you when you had only one eyebrow, right? When you and, and there was, was no just army. you and the goalkeeper and the and, and you blarged it. You could disallow it. The goalkeeper would disallow it. So oh, you mean if you're blarge. not allowed to kick, you kick the ball hard at yeah, the goalkeeper? at the goalkeeper and scoring a goal, the goal would be disallowed because it was blarged. Bah humbug. I've never seen that rule applied. You never, you never played the game? Yes, I did, of course. I was a dangerous inside right. I was the only man who ever scored an own goal. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play for a crowd under 16 called Arsenal. And they put me on and I scored against my own team. Do you know what happened? I got excited when I got the ball came to me and I looked and I saw a net. So I went for it and I put it in the top right hand corner. It was my own net. <laughs> they took me off right away. <laughs> he said he's too excited. You played for Arsenal, local team Arsenal. I'm going to find this out now. I was brought on once. Under 16. I was brought on once, yeah. I and I, I scored immediately. But you see, nobody was expecting me to. <laughs> but you must have played football before you were brought on. At of course I did. Of course I was an ex- accomplished street footballer. You know nothing about me. You know you know nothing about me. Nothing. That's what disturbs me. But I've got well, a question. Well, well, tell me I, this, I've, got a, what I've, I've got a questionnaire here actually. What age were you confined to bed? <laughs> I was in bed from when I was um, on. nine until uh, I was twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, between about nine and ten. Yeah, oh, no, right. between yeah, yeah, between nine and ten. Yeah. Right, so ten. I was in bed for a year. Yeah, well, that's all right then. So, so I know after, what you're thinking. Yes, how could he have recovered in yes. time? Yeah, to yes. play under yes. sixteen, I had five years to recover. That's all right then. Anyway, you, you say you don't know me. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I've got a list that's of a co- cue for a song. You give your hand to me. No thanks. And then you walk away, and I can hardly speak. And I skin my beaver. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know me. You don't know my beaver because I've skinned it. Right. Here, listen. Um, uh, a gentleman sends me a list. It's about forty-eight questions. Stop it. Very revealing questions. Uh, uh, so you should read these and give the listeners a benchmark uh, uh, of your own personality and social form. And he suggests that perhaps Sean should adjudicate on any categories necessary. So if I, so these are things that you, you know, that you're advised not to do. I want to ask you. I want to ask you if I do them. Right. And if the answer is yes, I tick it, right? So a successful outcome is not out of 48. Right. Right. I'm going to say, this is the thing, this is what it says. Never exaggerate. You do. Never point at another. You do. Never betray a confidence. (laughs) Yes. Never laugh the misfortunes of others. Yes. I, I want you to think for a little while before you answer, okay? It looks better. Never give a promise that you do not fulfil. Yes. Think a bit, I said. Think a bit. Don't be a meat. You're, you're answering before I finish the question. Never send a present hoping for one in return. 
Yes. He's a little doubt about that. Yeah, Can yeah. I make that a maybe? Aye. Put a question mark in there. Because right. you never send presents. That's right. That's, that's why that doesn't apply. No. no, that's null and void. Yeah. Never speak much of your own performances. Oh, gee. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no need to answer that, really. No. What's the answer, though, for the benefit of the bookie? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Never fail to be punctual at the time appointed. No, am I, I think I'm punctual. No, you're far from punctual. It's a yes, then. Never make yourself the hero of your own story. <laughs> <laughs> who, who wrote these questions? I, th- I think they wrote them with me in mind. <laughs> Never pick the teeth or, or clean the nails <laughs> yes. in company. Oh, there's one other thing, or fart. I'm right, yes. I don't even have to ask you that. No. Never fail to give a polite answer to a civil question. Oh, yes. Yeah. Never present a gift saying that it's of no use to yourself. Yes. <laughs> I always do that, don't I? Here, I here, take this. Like I don't want it. <laughs> Never read letters which you find addressed to others. You do it all the time. <laughs> Never fail if a gentleman of being sta. Uh, I think what? I sense a yeah. I sense a no here. Right. I sense. Never fail of being polite and civil to ladies. Uh, I do that. Yes. But I have a motive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. It's not because I'm a gentleman, it's because I'm a, I'm a lecher. Okay, that's two. What's the two? That's only one. The other one, never send a present hoping no. for one return. Oh, I no, no, no. Because you don't send presents. I... Never call attention to the features or form of anyone present. <laughs> <laughs> never refer to a gift you've made or favour you have rendered. In other words, don't be casting stuff yes. up. Yes. You do it all the time. You know, these are, this, is like, this is like a personality profile. There's a wee call pending. Ach, stop. Can't you see I'm enjoying myself? Never associate with bad company. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Why do you think they closed your hut down with <laughs> the key? Never, never give the key to your hut to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> never look over the shoulder of another who is reading or writing. Yes. I do that all the time. What are you doing? What are you looking at? Never... Well, that is a tricky one. Never appear to notice a scar, deformity, oh, or, <laughs> <laughs> or defect of anyone yes. present. Eyebrows, <laughs> I've bad done that. legs. I've done yes. that today already. Yes. Never arrest the attention of an acquaintance by touch. Speak to him. Never grab him. Do I do that? Do I grab people? No. To... That's a no. You're, you're not a grabber. <laughs> That's a no. no not a, you're not a grabber of me. No, I grab women, do I? Oh, Janice, or uh, Emma what? says you, you, you tend to touch girls in the upper arm. Yes, I do, you know. Yes. No, but I... I, I, I have noticed that when you're talking to girls and you're... Te- and, and, and you're Say you're admiring, which I've heard you admire, girls' eyeshadow or, or you know, things like that. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a nice nice wee top you're wearing. Yeah. You have a tendency to stroke their shoulder when, when, when talking to them. Yes, I, I, do I, that there. I, I've yeah. always done that. Yes. Is that, is that a bad thing, Emma? Is that, do you mean, is that threatening? I like it. Oh, you say? Ja, I, Emma, Emma likes it. Thank you. Well, see, I, I like doing that. I'm a very touchy, but you know nothing about me. I'm a very touchy-feely person, but, you know, that's as far as I go on the first date. <laughs> Never answer questions in general company that have been put to others. Run that one past me again. Never answer questions in general company that have been put to others. In other words, if I'm sitting in company yes. and somebody says, what do you think you're a man? I think you would. Speak ah, up. Yes, peep yes, up. Yes. Never when travelling abroad be over boastful in praise of your own country. Oh, that's a no. That's a no. That's mm-hmm. another no. Mm-hmm. I never do that. Never. I never say, darn it, it's wonderful. Never. Never. Never lend an article you have borrowed unless you have permission to do so. Uh, so if never. I never. Lend an article you have borrowed. In other words, if yes, you lend me a would. book... Yes, you would give it away. You would give it away. To just sell it? I don't need it. If somebody <laughs> lent me something, I'd sell it. Yes. Never attempt to draw the attention of the company constantly upon yourself. <laughs> <laughs> never have a hair transplant. Sorry. Never, <laughs> never exhibit anger, impatience or excitement when an accident happens. Um, now, you know you haven't seen me no, run after an ambulance. No, you ever seen me run after an ambulance? You're, you're fairly... Uh, that's one thing about you. You're fairly cool under pressure. That's right. Yes. Or yeah. is there a crisis? You would, you would tend to step back from it and... No, you, no. You call like, the police. Yeah, give right. a big no there. Call the PSNI. Yeah, okay. What about the phone call? Yeah, I'm enjoying this. All right, I'll do the phone call and then we'll go back to this. Yeah, hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Oh, for God's sake, it's only Jordy. You stopped me there. Jordy, sorry. How are you? I was in... Bon the barber's getting my bird trimmed. Your, 
your your bird trimmed? Ah. Right, okay. And next thing this cardboard box came in. A cardboard box came in on its own? No, I really left it in. He says, that's the tray that there. You have three minutes to get out. <laughs> no. <laughs> we used to have a lot of that here. Oh, what do you think it was? I have no idea. Moisturising cream. Cherry on and uses it. Uh, oh. Hi. <laughs> well, listen, a man a man sent me in some moisturising cream the other day, and it was very, very good. And I gave, I gave it some of it to my wife, and she pronounced it good. <laughs> I and don't I, believe a word of that, Jerry. Your wife wouldn't use it. Of course she would. Yeah. And uh, she said it was very, very good. It was very now, good why quality. Do you mos- why do you use this old moisturising cream? To keep my pores open. Huh? No, it's keep your just just to retain whatever kind of moisture. See, what happens is uh, people who don't use moisturising cream, like yourself, I wash in rainwater. I know, but you look like an old fig that's been withered, it's been <laughs> left out. You see, you get very wrinkly and your skin becomes oh, very dry. Oh, I'm having a wrinkle in my face. Ach, yeah, I've seen you. I've skin you, on me like a baby's bum. You look like a pear that's been left <laughs> out from 1948. Well, at least I'll not be using moisturising cream. Have you ever skinned a beaver? I have, you boy, yeah. <laughs> And there you are. <laughs> Have you? Aye. Right. I wasn't expecting it, yes. They've teeth on the good like a crocodile. That's right, like Esther Ranson. Where did you skin the beaver? No, Up I... In, a... in, in uh, the barn foot. Really? Is there beavers up there? Aye. Are you sure it wasn't a, a an otter or a stoot? No, 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 no. Or, or a, what do you call, what do you call those other things? Seen an otter and a beaver. What do you think? The no beaver's beaver. a big flat tail and it goes bump, 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 bump. It does indeed. Ah. I didn't. Is, are there beavers in Northern Ireland? Yes. Are you sure? I, I am I, sure. I don't think they're right. I never they're knew down that. They're down the foot. Are you sure? I never knew that. Well, I must know. I must find out if they're. No, I don't dodge in any way. Well, they're down the bond foot. Okay, right. What, what can so. you say? Ah. Well, tell me this and tell me no more. Have you used this moisturizer? No, I have not. Is it called Angel or something? I don't know. Have you got it there? No, the boy come into the barbers. Bond the barber. Oh, come into the barbers. Ah, I but was didn't... getting my bird trimmed. Yes, but I thought maybe the fellow brought it into you. No, he brought it into the barber. And why, why did my name come into it? Well, it says Jerry Holmes and uses it. <laughs> well, that's what it probably is. It's very good, actually. I, it? wish, I wish you had it with you, and then you could tell me what it was. What it, uh, there, there's it. a question on two for Jordy. Oh, yeah, okay. Jordy, uh, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, uh, Jordy can hear you. Jordy, I spoke with Jordy a few mornings ago there about trouble with slugs at the back door of my house. Yes, yes. And he advised me to uh, put out beer. Oh, the old wives' tale, yes. Yeah, but I think there must be uh, teetotalers because they're not, they haven't taken any of it. See and that? It's not, it's not working. Yeah, you see that, Jordy? They're not, it's not working, the, the well, old what, beer trick. Put a wee drop of sugar in the beer and the sugar will draw them in. Oh, there we go. Yes, the sugar, we sprinkle of sugar. Will you try that? I'll, uh, well, I thought maybe they were tea or something like that, you know, and maybe it wasn't the right beer, but... It might be Presbyterian they... slugs. <laughs> oh, they are, right. Okay, I'll well, try... I'll, try, I'll, I'll try, try the sugar. Try sugar and come back to us. No problem. Thank you. And Jerry, Thank I you. have... Bye. Bye. Jerry, I have... Uh, yes. Three lovely ganders. Yes. Coming up to Christmas on 13 magpie ducks, oh, the black get, and white ducks. You can't kill any of those, Jordy. You can't what? do that. You can't kill any of those. No, no. I'll not be killing them. They'll walk out to every get some and kill them. <laughs> oh, but, I mean, how could you take a gander home with you and then kill it? When are you going to start the old rickety wheel? I don't know if we'll do that this year or not. I'm, Ach, you should. I've become world-weary. Ach, now, you, you can sure my jack the first one, I reckon. <laughs> 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 well, I tell that story again. I love that story. No, you should have the rickety wheel. I'm going to tell that story again. <laughs> Why? I have to tell the story. Jordy brought his ferret in to children in need, right? Uh, as a, just a kind of a novelty. And uh, the producer said, wouldn't it be a great idea if the ferret spin, spun the rickety wheel? There was, there were, we were having prizes, you know, and that kind of thing. But the only thing was that they had already asked Jimmy Nesbitt if he wanted to spin the rickety wheel. And he said, yes, he would do it. And he said, well, you know, I said, go let me tell. <laughs> so I went up to Jimmy Ness and I said, Jimmy, didn't, did they ask you to spin the rickety wheel? He said, yeah. I said, they, they, you don't have to do that now. He said, I don't mind doing it. He said, no, you don't have to do it now. They want to do something else. 
I said, well, what are they going to do? I said, well, they're going to spin the rickety wheel, but a ferret's going to spin it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I've never been replaced by a ferret before. I said, stick around, kid. There's worse to come. Thank you, Jordy. Hey, bye, Jerry. Bye. What? This is why nobody ever covers any ABBA songs. Back after the news. All right. Hello, Hugo. to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. BBC News at 11 o'clock with Josephine Long. The Health Minister Edwin Putz has alleged that some members of Unison have been subjected to a degree of bullying by others in the run-up to the union's 24-hour strike. He said he had received calls from members who were concerned that they're being bullied into striking when they don't want to. Unison's Patricia McKeown denied the claims and alleges health service managers are in the wrong. Some of their middle managers have in fact been bullying people like nurses, saying that if you take industrial action on, on Wednesday next, um, you're in danger of being struck off. That, of course, is not a fact. The senior management of the health service has agreed with me that that is unacceptable. The health trusts say they will work with the union to try to ensure patients are kept informed of appointments being cancelled and rescheduled. A pub landlady from Portsmouth has won her legal case against the English Premier League over the screening of football matches in a case which could threaten deals with Sky and ESPN worth £600 million a year. The European Court of Justice found in favour of Karen Murphy, who has been showing games in her pub using a cheaper Greek satellite service. Her lawyer, Paul Dixon, said the ruling would increase competitions and give fans a, fair, a better deal. It'll mean cheaper uh, subscription costs for consumers who want to purchase the uh, uh, television services. I think it could also mean uh, lower prices for match day attendances and hopefully uh, uh, an improved entertainment offering on match days. Amanda Knox is reported to be on her way home to the United States after an Italian court cleared her of the murder of the British student Meredith Kircher. It's understood Miss Knox is flying from Rome to London where she'll board a connecting flight to Seattle. The family of Meredith Kircher have said it feels as if they are back to square one after Miss Knox and her former boyfriend, Raffaele Celestito, were acquitted of Meredith's killing last night. Sport now, here's Grant Cameron. Italian hooker Leonardo Giraldini has been suspended until mid-January for his attempted eye gouge on Ireland prop Cian Healy during Sunday's Rugby World Cup match in Dunedin. 
Munster hooker Michael Sherry is being flown to New Zealand as cover for Rory Best. The Ulster star is battling a shoulder injury ahead of Saturday's quarter-final against Wales. Johnny Wilkinson's taken part in light training with England, raising hopes he will recover from his elbow injury in time to play against France. And the Belfast flyweight Michael Conlon can secure qualification for the London Olympics if he beats Nordine Ubali of France at Boxing's World Amateur Championships in Azerbaijan later. Thanks Grant and now the weather with Jackie McCann. It'll remain cloudy and breezy through the first half of the day with a scattering of showers sailing in on the brisk southwesterly breeze. The showers will be mainly concentrated towards the north but they'll fade away for the afternoon and many places should escape with a dry day. However, sunshine will be in short supply although the odd bright spell will develop, especially across parts of the southeast. Temperatures will be down in recent days, peaking at 14 degrees. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. In Newton Abbey, there's a lane closure on the Doak Road from Old Carrick Road to Ashley Park. That's until 4.30 this afternoon. Looking ahead, the M1 will be closed each night this week from Junction 10 at Lurgan to Junction 9 at Moira from 9pm until 6am. This will only affect traffic heading towards Belfast with delays of around half an hour expected. And at George Best Belfast City Airport, the 20 past 9 Flyby flight from Newcastle is now expected at 12 o'clock. Michael Bedwell reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback with Wendy Austin today, no honour for Aaron. The mother of a soldier killed while defusing a bomb in Afghanistan says the army's betrayed her son. We'll be talking to her. Nurses will strike from midnight for the first time in 30 years. I did a public meeting in Newry last night. There were no protests about the fact that the, the health and education workers are taking strike action from midnight tonight. People understand why they're doing it. Do you support the strike? We want your calls on that 08459 555 678. Also today we're asking what next for Foxy Noxy and a class act, the County Derry husband and wife who've taught an X Factor finalist each. Join the debate on Talk Back at 12. Channel 5. Let's begin with the great divine director's call. We'll give the preamble. And then we'll make invocations before the altar, before the decree. Great divine directors call together. In the name of the God, it's like God, and the great divine director, and the Lord, the God, and the Lord, 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 Tugboat coming, steamship coming, the pilot's in, the wheelhouse humming. He married the daughter of a noble proctor. He's looking out. And all his Hudson water Sees them come from their bog roads Come in their coffin loads To work the big machine In the land The docks are crowded, hot and loud. He'd drown them all if the laws allowed it. But the Constitution is no solution, it just allows. This vile pollution Well he don't mind the Dutchman The Swedes or the Prussian The 
Belgians or the Briton But he wouldn't give those Irishmen his spit Kevin Doherty, of course, uh, singer-songwriter supreme, just about the best there is. Uh, Telegraph, it's called, the album, and that track is called uh, Tugboat. And uh, he's doing a couple of gigs. Where is he, where is he doing these? Hold on a second. Who, who took these got pizza of paper here? What pizza paper? The pizza paper that I'm looking at. Where is Rodney Crowell playing when he comes to Northern Ireland next week? He's uh, kicking Stalin. off. He's kicking off on the 14th at the Queen's Festival, I think. And then he's doing various other gigs, which I don't have details on, but uh, I shall supply that. He's 
appearing on this programme on Friday morning, along with Grania Holland, uh, not together, but, you know, separately. So there's a girl singing in Irish and a man singing in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Really looking forward to that. He's got a new book, which I'm reading at the moment, which is very, very good. It's called China Berry Sidewalk. It's all about his childhood. He had a very dysfunctional childhood. His mother and father were crazy. And uh, he, he, once, uh, he had a party in their house one time, and he, he, he was eight years old, and he fired a gun because he wanted to go to bed. He fired a gun? Yeah, because everybody was full, you see, and he couldn't stand it anymore. He, he found a gun, he went into the living room and fired it into the ground. Everybody went home. <laughs> you would too, wouldn't you? Uh, you would, wouldn't yeah. you? Hey, yeah. hey, there's a kid with a gun, let's get yeah. out of here. Rodney's on one. Rodney who? I don't know. Emma, Emma's, Emma got him. It's not Rodney Crowell, is it? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's saying he doesn't want to come on. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Rodney, how are you? Uh, how's things? All right, thanks. I'll tell you what I have, Jerry. I have a stoat living under the dacken at the side of the house. Not many people can say that. No, and I was looking, Jordy, to see how I can get rid of the skipper. Uh, oh, you want to get rid of the skip? Get rid of the stoat? A stoat. Um, right. Is it doing? Is it doing any harm? Or? Well, I would be a wee bit afraid of him with the children about the side oh, of the house. You've, you oh, know? You've, you've you've kids, of course. Yeah. Well, I, 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 you don't know which way a, a stoat is going to jump, do you? Well, you don't, and I'll tell you, he's that fast. He, 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 the children were watching him one day, they're going out one end of the deck and then under the other end, and he, he, they thought there was three of them. He was like a bullet. They're fast. Is he white? I, Is he white? He, no, he's a fawny colour, but he's got a white chest. All right, OK. And a wee black tip on the end of the tail. Well, you wouldn't just know how he would react if, for instance, one of your children accidentally kind of came across it and he was in a corner. You, you wouldn't know how he'd react. Do, do you? He might just go for them, mightn't he? He's, he's, he's got some sort of teeth in him, by I tell you. What do you say? See, stoats, um, uh, stoats are well equipped for whatever life I will fire uh, at them. Uh, and, you know, uh, mm. All right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll me, ask Jordy. Me, 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 myself and her indoors is going to end up divorced over over the week. Right, well, okay. well, what about what about a rat cage to catch him? Well, he, I, I don't want to. I don't want to catch him. I'm looking rid of him. I yeah, but, if, but what you would do is you catch him, and then take him away. P- take, uh, take, take I, him away, and you know, put let him go somewhere. Yeah, uh, you could do uh, that. You know, uh, uh, try I, I, I would do that. A rat, get a rat cage. Yeah, get a big cage. Try and catch him, and then uh, release him in the wild. Yeah, you know, uh, don't well, give him somewhere. It, I, I have, I've tried shooting him. Ach, don't do that. What do you want to shoot him for? Well, I'm dark now, so I shot two holes in the dark and then I shot the blades off the wife's windmill. <laughs> not a and, great... And, and, and things aren't good over that. No, no, uh, but see, that was, that's extreme... That's extreme... Uh, an extreme reaction, I have to say. Well, I, I heard of them going into houses before Jerry. Yes. Into people's houses, like getting into attics and all things like Well, there's a possibility, and the weather's getting a bit cold now. Uh, he, he might just fancy a bit of indoor living. Uh, well, I don't want him anywhere near me indoor living. All right, then. Well, okay, I'll ring, well, well, I'll ring Jordy back. Yes, don't... Uh, just ask him. All right. Well, but that's <laughs> I think. I, wait, wait, I think, I mean, that makes sense, getting a rat case. I'll tell you, I, I would play a bit of golf there, the same as Sean, and I've missed two weekends of golf over him. Uh, because oh, she oh, won't uh, go out the back and she won't move or yeah. nothing. And, well, if I, a stoat is making a man miss his golf, it deserves to die. Oh, well, no, that's what I it. thought. That's what I thought, Jerry. But let's right. face it, it's not the stoat's fault that uh, he found a nice home under well, the deck. Sean, yes. you wouldn't miss your golf. No, I wouldn't. But I w- well, Would you kill a stoat rather than miss a game of golf? I wouldn't. No, if somebody said well, you... No, I wouldn't kill it. No, kill it. I wouldn't kill it, no. no would way. you miss your golf and, and live with him? I would, I would, I would get a rat cage. That's the first thing I would do. Or I would go to a man who catches rats, right, and ask him for advice, and right. say, "Would you come down here? It's a pe- it's pest control. Let's visit. What do you suggest?" And uh-huh. and, and, and get advice on that score. And uh-huh. get rid of them humanely. That's good advice, Sean. That is good. Advice. Very good. Very right. good. And, uh, so, so well, well, we, yes, you'll put the word out for me. I know what. To see if anybody has any ideas. Any well, other ideas? What, okay. Yes. We we have a gentleman here in this town and well known rat catcher, <laughs> Mr. Page, Charlie Page. We'll ask him if he's hey, listening. Uh, oh, he was down at my house one time. There you are. You I, had a, I had a rat. Sure he wouldn't. He wouldn't come from there. To no, but he'll give, us, he'll give you advice. Yeah. If uh, the well, advice so that I give you. Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah, he's yes. been a lifetime exterminating things. Yes. 
Right. All right, then. Well, any, anything else, we'll let you know, OK? Good man, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, okay. bye. 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 F- Fiona's on, too. Never pass between two people who are talking together without an apology. Mm, I think you would do that. No, you're not. You're not ignorant on that score. Do Never. You know what I hate on that very point. Do you know what I hate? I hate. You know when you're talking to someone, and yeah. it's just you and that person. Yeah. And someone comes up into the company, and they demand to get into the conversation just by using their body language. They're not saying anything, but they stand right in your eye vision, or they stand right beside you, and they're mustering about, and they're fittering about, and they're trying, and you know they're, they're not listening to what you're talking about. I they're do just that, waiting for I? a break in the conversation to come in with their, their tuppence worth. I do that, I think that's I? very, very ignorant. I do that, don't I? I don't think you do. I think I do, yes. I, I, no, I don't think you would do that, nor would you pass anyone uh, without saying, excuse me. Would I enter a room noisily? And no. fail to close the door behind me yes. and slam it? Mm, Never yeah, slam it? You wouldn't be a slam out of the door, but you'd... Yeah. I'd enter a room noisily. Would I? I don't think Is so. Is that a no? I don't think so. I can't believe no, it. No, no, you're a quiet wee boy. <laughs> Would I allude to conquests which I may have made with the ladies? <laughs> yes. I'll just pass over that one. <laughs> Never be... Gu- There's no need to ask. Uh, <laughs> Never be... Gu- Would I be guilty of contemptible meanness of opening a private letter addressed to another? Yes, yes. certainly. Would I fail to offer the easiest and best seat in the room to an invalid or elderly person? Yet, no, I wouldn't fail no, to do that. No, no. no that's, that's a yes. A, that's a no. That's I mean. a no. That's a no. Mm-hmm. Would I fail to perform the commission which the friend has entrusted to you? You must. Not, I don't even understand that. I'll score that out. You score out the ones you don't understand. Right. Would I send my guest, who is accustomed to a warm room, off into a cold, damp, spare bed to sleep? Yes. yes. <laughs> Would I enter a room filled with people without a slight bow to the general company when first entering? What am I, some kind of bishop? Yeah. No. It's a stupid one. Yeah. Stupid. Would I fail to answer an invitation either personally or by letter within a week after the invitation is received? <laughs> <laughs> people ask me to do things. What about Fiona? Well, you hang on to yourself. You hit me and join yourself. Would I accept a favour and hospitality without rendering an exchange of civilities when opportunity arose? Hospitality? All right, then. I made a mistake. Hospitality. Read that again with the hospitality one. Would I accept favours and res- hospitality without rendering an exchange of civilities when the opportunity offers? In other words, would I accept a favour yeah. and then not do one back? Of course I would. Would I cross the leg and put one foot in a streetcar or places where it will trouble others when they're passing by? Absolutely. Would I fail to tell the truth? <laughs> you don't have to finish that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> would I borrow money and neglect to pay? Yes. That's very quick. You answered that very quickly. You still what, owe me money from Portugal. Would I, would I write to another asking for information or a favour of any kind without enclosing a postage stamp? <laughs> don't well, you don't know. You've no experience of that. So no, that's me a no. I have know. to rack up some... I'm nearly finished now. Mm. Would I fail to say kind and encouraging words to those whom you meet in distress? Would mm. my kindness lift them out of their despair? Yes, no, I would. No, you're kindly. I'm you're kindly. kindly. Yes, yes. I may be many things, but yes, I'm not cruel. No, no. Would I refuse to... Would I refuse to receive an apology? No, I would no, always no, accept no, apology. No, 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 you, you accept apology. I'd also ask for money as well. When walking arm in arm with a lady, would I continually change and go to the other side because of a change of corners? <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> what a silly... Do you, but do you remember that? Do you remember girls linking on to men? Yeah, and you always had to be on the outside. Did you did you do that? Were you a linker on her? I you, never walked. You, you're a no. I, you wouldn't be a linky. I never walked out. What, what's what's there's a linky and a what? What would you be then? The linker? <laughs> no, you're not the linker. Be very <laughs> careful what you say. I know, but there's a linky, the Gerd. What would the what the would linker you, and the linky? Oh, but are you the linker? I'm the linker, and she's and the linky. She's the linky. Yeah, yeah. But so see, you're I, I never, a linker. No, I never did that. What? Uh, but uh, I could understand men with their arm across their belly. You need to explain that for the benefit of when people. When a man, like, when, when the linker, when the linker was walking down the street. With the linky. And the linky. The, the linker had his hand across his belly. Like, what did he do, you know, no, to be I, proper? Well, it, it, because he didn't want to put it in his pocket. Yes, and then, but then the sort of teddy bars or the younger boys like you came along and you put your hand in your pocket and the linky then put her arm around your arm while your arm is in, in, in your hands in the pocket. Well, is she some kind of contortionist? Yeah, but do you understand? 
It changed. No girl, no girl ever put her hand in my pocket, and no matter how many times I asked no, her. No, not your, not her hand. Oh, sorry. Your hand was in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> right. A, a, a name springs to mind, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> I know. No. <laughs> Starts, starts with a W. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Right. Right. Would I insult another with harsh words? Yes. Yes. Would I fail to speak kindly? If a merchant and I address my clerk, if an overseer and you address your workman, if in any position we exercise authority, do you show yourself to be a gentleman by a pleasant mode of address? I'm very good like that. Yes. I'm very good to workmen. Even if they're inferior. <laughs> <laughs> would I attempt to convey the impression that I'm a genius? Yes. Yes. Would I give all your my pleasant words and smiles to strangers, and the kindest words and sweetest smiles should, would be reserved for home? Home. Oh, no, it's only a statement. Okay, let me count this up. There's forty. <laughs> 40 there's forty-eight questions, and uh, of which the ideal answer is yes. Right. One, two, three. Why would you just count the nose? I have 13 no's out of 48. That's not bad. No, that's not good. Is it not? It's not because nearly every one of those is a vile thing to do. Is there someone on the line here, did you yes. say? Yes. Oh, sorry, who is it? Fiona. Is it? Uh, hello, Fiona. Two. Oh, sorry, two. On two. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Jerry. Sorry is for keeping you... It... Oh, never worry. I know what you're like. Where did you get that nonsense from there, anyway? A man sent it to me. I think oh, there are indications that this is a very old kind of a list uh, from an age of chivalry. Because, oh. you know, they're, they're talking about coaches and stuff. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, we don't go on coaches unless you're going to, you know, lords or something, which I'm not well, ready for yet, but I'll probably be there soon. Anyway, why I'm ringing in is the gentleman that phoned in earlier on about slugs at the back door. Yes. I've had the same problem. And my dad was up one night and I took a drum of salt and I shaked it all over the back step and that cured the problem. That melts the slugs. It does. It dissolves them. You see that they don't like slugs. Don't like that. No, they won't come over the salt. No, they then don't like. O- they don't like being dissolved. Morning, one other morning, for some reason, they were all up the window on the conservatory. You could see this slug trail, and we had to put it around the window sill as well, and that cured that problem as well. Five years ago, the weather's ago, you... so wet. You see, they're coming out of the garden. That's right. They're everywhere. Yeah. There was so a time... that's just. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. That's a good bit of advice. Uh, do you have any trouble with the slugs yourself? Oh, up the back door and everything. My husband was in England working and I was busy telling him about this on the phone. Yes. And when he came home, he finished his work in England and my daughter and I went to the docks one night to collect him from the boat. And my dad was here babysitting. And when we came back, he said to me, what's, what's this all about the slugs? Did you see the back door? I said, Daddy, I have that every single night. And he went to my cupboard and he got salt and he poured it all over and down around the side of the door everywhere. And Excuse me. Was... And that cured the problem. And that was the end of them. And that was the end of them. There we Sometimes are. Sometimes the rain will have washed the salt away, so just throw an all wee bit out. A drum of salt's not too expensive. All right then. It's less than a pound, so get a couple of drums and keep them in the cupboard and that'll cure the problem. Okay, then that's good advice. Thank you very much. All right then, Jerry. Bye. 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 I never really wanted this job. But look at it from my point of view. You know the routine. You've broken up. Locks changed, CDs divvied and boxed, ring returned, cuddly toy drawn and quartered. It doesn't matter that I felt lousy. It doesn't matter that I realised I might have been a tad hasty. It doesn't matter that I would have been willing to turn over a new leaf. It doesn't matter. You fall. You don't rise again. If only it was so simple. Oh, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, water than people put in the billy dab no no, water than people put in the billy dab no no, water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the billy dab no no, you water than people put in the
Can't deny that. Gotta have a yellow woman when you're a yellow man. That's Randy Newman, of course, a song called Yellow Man. I played a track earlier on from an album by Kevin Doherty called Telegraph, and I wanted to tell you that there were a couple of gigs. He does very special shows uh, about uh, based on that album, uh, very visual and everything like that. He's doing two shows in Dublin, if you're down there, Thursday the 13th and Thursday the 20th of October in the Leeson Lounge, Upper Leeson Street, Dublin 4, as they say. Um... A lot of uh, correspondence regarding the word bluter. Right. Um, could I, could, just before you move on to that, could you tell Mary where Jimmy Buckley's playing on the 25th of November? No. Uh, hedgehog in your garden to get rid of the slugs. And uh, Actually, what about the fleas that are in the hedgehog? Do you ever see a hedgehog? Do you ever see a, a hedgehog used to live in my back garden? Because my, I, I, I have never been in my back garden. 
And nobody in our family has ever been in my back garden, really, because we just don't go out there. And the hedgehog decided that there was nobody living in the house. And the hedgehog decided that the back garden was his. It was a big thing, a big hedgehog. He used to come out and sit in the middle of it. And, you know, he didn't, re- he didn't re- he realised that nobody would ever come out, so it was great. We, I observed the hedgehog for many weeks. And unfortunately, it went into hibernation and never came out again. I think it slept in. Mm. But it had some fleas, I'm telling you. It scratched 23 hours a day. Ach, they don't scratch. They do. They do not. They do. They do not. Listen, you don't How could a, 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 what do you call it, thing again? Hedgehog. How could a hedgehog scratch? Should Why we not? cut the paws of himself? It's got little tiny things that can get in between the quills. Ach, your drawers. To leave my drawers out of this. It's a hedgehog. Do hey, I want the, people to ring up and tell them. that. Hedge, how... Are you trying to tell me a hedgehog with wee, wee tiny legs? He, he can get away up the back of his neck and away up around the back of his back. Hedgehogs are the same as us. Do you realise there is no part of your body that you can't reach? A hedgehog, we're the only, we're the only species that can do that. There are parts of your body you're not, su- that. There are parts of your body you're not supposed to reach. Hedgehogs. <laughs> no, but no ma- Every animal can reach every part of his body one way or another. A hedgehog doesn't No scratch. animal exists. Well, a snake can't. A snake, a snake can roll up and lick his back. Couldn't he? Well, you see, there's no part of a snake's body that it can't get at some no. way or another with no. another part of its body. You see, if that was the case, you see... We couldn't function. I don't think there's any animal that has a body that it, that has any part of it that they cannot. What about a giraffe? A giraffe couldn't touch his bum. <laughs> could it? It might be able to. How well, could, no. front, it could it bring could, his front foot round. It, but, uh, it might be able to get his neck giraffe? down. It, 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 it might be able to it, lick it, his it, bum. To, oh, he could turn his neck around. You see, sideways. you don't know. But you see, how could a... There's no way... See, let's what? See, as, uh, could a giraffe get out the middle of its neck? Could it? By no. maybe it's, well, I, it, could, it, I bet you a bit. If it put its neck down and yeah. put its back leg up, it could give it a bit of a scratch. You see, I can't think of any animal. A tortoise, Galapagos tortoise, or Galapagos turtle, whatever, Galapagos tortoise, it can't get at itself. It could have took its shell off. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, my ox, what are you the, talking the, about? The you stoat could, man, Rodney. I, I don't phones. think, don't call him the stoat man. He may not like it. Well, what do I call him? Call him... The, the reptile man. No, I'll call him the... I'll just call him Rodney. Rodney. Yeah. Okay, well, Rodney, uh, a gentleman says, uh, put pepper through the cracks of the of the um, Deccan. Uh-huh. Lots of pepper. Or, indeed, Finn, that Geordie's old method of the old Jay's fluid. Apparently, a stoat doesn't like anything that smells strong. Uh, a powerful smell. I just and, put Geordie in. And the, 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 stoat, <laughs> the stoat will disappear. My Oxford Dictionary of English defines bluter as a verb of Scottish etymology meaning to hit or kick something hard and wildly. You see, example, yes. he blutered the ball over the bar. See, yes. we, we, we poo-poo that. We no, regard... we do not. We, we... we agreed with that. No, you we blutter. Didn't. No, blarged. Uh, no, said. you blutter and you barge. You can't blutter the ball. Okay. Origin 1980s earlier senses include blunder, a blutter, or talk foolishly. Nah, we don't accept that. The earlier sense is a bit like blather or blether or blither, meaning talk long-windedly without making very much sense. A fine word to describe this program. Many a time my dad would say to me, quit your blethering. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which, indeed, everybody says yeah, that. But then there's other, in another part of the world, Jerry, if you've done a blutter, you have passed wind. <laughs> A blutter would be known as, they say, a noisy fart, which unfortunately comes along with a dose of, you know what, Andrew near Cookstown. In our part of the world, if you've done a blutter, you've passed wind. Ask Geordie, will the winter be good or bad? We don't need Geordie to know. We know. We know. What about Paul? What? Paul. We know that this winter is going to be evil, pestilential, cold and horrible. I got a flu jab yesterday. You did not. I did, yeah. Because sore, I'm taking no chances. Remember that virus I got Um, lately? That nearly have, floored me, you know. Me, excuse it's, me. It's ruined my training for the marathon. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, yes. I must apologise to you. What for? I must apologise to Hedgehog. you. Hedgehog. Yes. Yes. We have got uh, on YouTube here or whatever it is, Google or whatever it is, um, a little film of a hedgehog. And he's sitting scratching the back of himself. I know, but you see, I've sat and watched that for weeks and you don't believe a word I say. No, but you see, I was thinking about up in his back. The hedgehog, hedgehog would, would scratch his jaw, all right, but he can't. He couldn't scratch his belly, and he couldn't scratch his back. Why not? He can't scratch his shoulders. He can scratch every part the of big him. Bristles, the big things. They can retract his quills. 
Look, there. It can retract his quills. He can't get his leg up. Well, you see, that's your problem too, but we don't talk about it here. Anyway, Paul's... Uh, the Itchy Hedgehog, it's called, on YouTube. All hedgehogs Do you are... want to ch- check it out? No, thanks. Go on to YouTube. I, the Itchy I, I don't need to go to YouTube to look at a hedgehog. I had my own hedgehog. I studied it for weeks. Oh, he's peeing. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, he's scratching himself. He is scratching himself. <laughs> but he, on his shoulder, he's scratching his shoulder. Have you seem surprised. I, I never knew they scratched. I, I knew they were full of fleas, but I never thought. I thought the fleas lived there. There was like, there was harmony there. What do you think it I, was? The Hilton Hotel? No, but I mean, it's there's more fleas on a hedgehog than any other animal, say. Oh, gee, thanks. I think I told you that half no, an hour ago. No, you did not. When a we hedgehog, all know that once a hedgehog dies, you can see the fleas jumping off, sinking the sinking ship. We everybody knows that. Looking for another hedgehog. Yeah. But this boy's scratch. Oh, jeepers, he is. Listen, I'll just leave you with your hedgehog. Uh, I was asked to play a track by Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. Paul. Leonard Drain. Paul's Witten. I know, I know. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. Do you think there's a song there? There's a song there. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. No. Whisper Leonard Drain. No, no, no. Leonard Drain. Leonard Drain. There's a song that came to me a moment ago and it's left me. Leonard's a nice man. We were on yesterday, but it's a great name, Leonard Drain. Len Drain. Len Drain. That would be for short, I suppose. Uh, he asked me to play a, a version of uh, John Condon. I can't find uh, Janet Dow's version, but I've got uh, Mary Dillon's, which is quite good too. What about Paul? Hey, stop. I've been I can't get over this hedgehog here. Scratching. I know. It's, you see, it's because, you know, he... Look at him. Yeah, right. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Hello, how are you? I'm grand, I'm grand. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. First, first, a couple of things. First, um, I need to correct you on your Scotchology. Yes. But, uh, being, a, being a Scotsman, we'd never use the word blooter to, to, to say how we were hitting something. We'd use the word blatter. Blatter. Yeah, of course, there's another word that we never, uh, we didn't introduce into the conversation, the etymology. And you would uh, describe as being on the blooter or bloottered. But you'd never blooter a ball or anything, you'd blatter a ball. Absolutely not. You blatter or blarge the ball, but you'd never be bloottered unless you had alcoholic drink in your system, or as they say in Derry Stoke London, Derry had a number of bottles in him. <laughs> right then, so thank anyway. you for clear. And you're, and you, and do you live here or are you on the Scottish mainland? Uh, no, I, I live here. I live near Ballycaddy. Good man. But you, you, I, sound uh, like a, you sound like a local then. <laughs> There's no difference between the Scottish accent and the accent down there. You just meld better, right in. Better, better not go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. No, 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 that wasn't what I was calling about. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was calling, actually. Uh, are you adverse to uh, receiving any criticism at all? I can t- I can handle criticism. As a matter of fact, I often welcome it. Can you handle criticism? Well, yeah. what, what I'm phoning about, really, what I phoned about um, was uh, you've got somebody talking away in the background there constantly when you're, when you're uh, talking with your mate there. That's right. And it's quite disconcerting, quite annoying. But I realise now that I phoned up and the person that answered the phone is the person that actually is talking in the background there. Oh, yeah, you see, whenever you hear Emma, who, who it is, whenever you hear Emma talking, Emma's talking to people on the phone. Ah, uh-huh. it's and really annoying. It, it is. Emma, Emma is very annoying. It's, uh, <laughs> could, you, could you not wrap her up and either put her in a soundproof booth or wrap her up in, in cardboard boxes or something to no, I'd like, I'd like to hear keep her the talking. noise down? No, I'd like to hear her talking. Makes well, me, makes we me don't. Nice. OK, I'm sorry well, about that. Lovely, there lovely, was a though. family in our street. <laughs> there was a family in our street. And they used the word blatter for farting. They said, who blathered? Mm-hmm. Were they Scottish? So blat- bl- uh, they, no, they weren't. They weren't well, but, well, they were uh, wrong then. Well, yeah. most football fans would regard that as being the correct use of the words when they think of Sepp Blatter. Ah, blatter. Ah. Blatter. Are you blatter. I'm sure oh. a lot of people would like to blatter him, though. Indeed, yeah. Right, go away, everybody. Uh, all the best. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Another day. Beneath the Belgian sun Past grave on grave Row upon row Until I see the name John Condon Carved in stone With harp and cry Little crosses Standing there, my silent prayer is for a boy who died a soldier. We laughed, he'll not cry.
That's Van Morrison anyway. I don't know what that is. I, I suppose I should, but I don't. I played that by mistake, and then when I realised I'd played that by mistake, I didn't want to take it off because people like Van Morrison. And uh, I don't... I can't be bored with that, really. I wanted to play something else, but not to worry. A bit of a mistake. What? I'm sorry. Mary's in a hurry. Is she? Yes. All right, then. Hello, Mary. She's very much in a hurry. Uh, Hello, Mary. You? Sorry. Hello, what? Mary. How are you? How are you doing? I'm all right. Mary? Yes, OK. Husband of Mary's. Husband of Mary, uh, Sean. It's no, no, Mary. I didn't. No, no, was Mary on the phone? Husband of Mary. Yes, Mary was on the phone. Mary was on the phone. She was looking about the trench road to see was it was open. So, so Any, it's up over to you now. Anybody can make a mistake. Yes, uh, yes. What was Mary uh, looking for? Husband of Mary. Mary was looking to see was the trench road open. The trench road open. Yes. We must explain the trench road is a road that is here in Derry, Stoke, London, Derry. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Why would it not be? I'm wondering. Was it closed? No, it was closed. Was it? Sean, you're the man with the you local see, knowledge. You see, uh, Mary and her husband, are they're, they're travelling from Oma. Correct. Uh-huh. And they, you, you used this road before. Yeah, uh-huh. all and the it, time. And it was it closed the last time you were on it? No, but uh, a few days after that it was closed. Yeah. So uh-huh. you want to know, is it now... But this is a good while ago now. This uh-huh. was a month ago. So Would you be able to find that out, Sean? Bibbly. <laughs> mm, Would you be I, able to find that out? Well, how can we do that? Because you're the man with his finger on the local pulse. Your program is uh, solely devoted to local issues, and you're Jerry Stoke London Derry, whereas I, uh, the cast mind that wider. Uh, I, I just throw that ball to you. Well, if anyone listening, anyone yes. near the trench road, if you could let us know, yes. is it opened? We'll find and out we'll before find 12, 12 o'clock, and we'll let you know. That's lovely. All right, all, thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thanks for helping. Thank us. you. Thanks. Exciting query, Sean. Kier- Thank you for Kieran's, putting that my way. Kieran's on too. Thank you. Uh, any road that you want to know if it's open or not, Kieran? Good morning, Kieran. Why is he not talking to me? I wonder. I don't know. Why would he not be speaking to me? Has you got him on too? I have indeed. Yes. Emma, was Kieran on too? Kieran's yes, Kieran's there. Kieran, you stop your horn. Do a cooey. Try a cooey. Kieran, cooey. <laughs> I hate that when you do that, Kiri. He's not there. Kieran. Hello there. Kieran. 
<laughs> Can you hear me all right? Hear you now, yes. Hello, is Jerry here? Yes, he is. Have you got your radio on? I am. Um, that's the birds in the back garden that's swirling there. No, it's not that. Well, well, would, you, would you put your radio off, please? Because it's uh, a, a very strange sound. Well, when, 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 when Kieran's putting his radio off, we can just tell Mary and her husband that the road is open. <laughs> Mary and her husband here travelling from Oma to Derry to, to go to Alton Gavin Hospital. The road is open. I feel a great sense of relief. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank Hello. you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Yes? Hello. Yes, that's better. Hello, Jerry. Hello, how are you? Not so bad yourself. I'm, I'm all right, thank you. Uh, good, good programme there, but uh, I was going to wonder there, Jerry, you were talking about animals now and the touch and stuff. Yes. I wonder, could you kiss your elbow? Can I kiss my elbow? Aye. Uh, um... That sounds like... Go and try it, this Jerry. No, you can't. No, no, you can't kiss your elbow. Oh, you but... can, surely, Jerry, if you're fat enough. Well, maybe you could, but, I mean, my days of elbow no. kissing are over. Ah, but you, but you can, you can reach your... Well, but, no, what I was basically saying was that you can reach, uh, you can reach any part of your body. Ah. Uh, there's no part of your body you can't reach for one reason or another. Well, Jerry, uh, I would say you reach plenty of parts of your body. Yes, thank you. But uh, k- uh, kiss your elbow. Uh, can you kiss your elbow? I'll try that uh, after I've taken a couple of drinks. It may be easier. I this... might see you up there. Maybe the night may be on your about. Or up where? Up on there, area, maybe on. All right, then, by all means, uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm phoning from Limavady here, Jerry. Yes, good man. And how are things in Limavady today? Uh, it's not so bad, but that I'll uh, smell that I'll dung. Coming from Belfast, we don't need it. Uh, that oil, the uh, dung coming from Belfast, what, what would that be? Uh, that's that oil, uh, you know that oil incinerator thing that, that broke down in Belfast, will they? Oh, I know nothing about that. Mr. Coyle has all the local knowledge. Do you know anything about an incinerator breaking down? In Belfast. And causing causing a, a, a uh, unacceptable odour in Lima Valley? They're shipping it in lorries, Jerry. They're shipping something in lorries through uh, Lima Valley? Of... Onto the Katie Mountain, and the smell of it is unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but no, it's, no, it's but a serious you... thing, right? Well, did, did Wendy not discuss that yesterday? I'm sure yeah, she did. Yeah, second day, Wendy, sure. Mm, Wendy yeah. was on about that yesterday. Uh, and, and, you know, to take away the good view of Donegal and all, Jerry, you know, all the tourists all coming on. So now they're exporting smells from Belfast to Lima Valley. I, and I think that, uh, you know yourself, like, I think uh, better keep the west of the van ourselves. Indeed, yes. Okay. Well, well, I, I may be more informed about that tomorrow. I shall make it a point to uh, find out more about the incinerator being shifted to Liver Valley. All right, then. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jerry. All the best. Dude. Bye. 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 The things going on in this world. Could you play Dolly Parton? We know nothing Parton? about. What? Could you play Dolly Parton? Knock, knock, knocking on Heaven's Door. I don't Dolly think Parton so. Dolly Parton the black lady, black. Oh no, no, awesome. I love that. Yeah. Hey, have you got it? No. <laughs> That king was little from a born cane With a little drop of poison in her red, red blood She needs a way to turn around the bed She said, I want to walk away and start over again There are things I've done I can't erase I want to look in the mirror and see another face I said never, but I'm doing it again Walk away and start over again. No more rain. No more roses. I'm on my way. I won't snake my thirst in a cool, cool pond. There's a winner in every place. And there's a heart that keeps beating on every page. The beginning of it starts at the end. Told Molly, I heard that the whole block is gone. They would die from Monday, June. I mean, uh, fur. I always get out of the trouble I'm in, you know. Yeah, well, you can always walk away and start over again.
Don't forget your Bible. I left it on the side of the road. I call my initials in an old dead tree. I'm going away, but I'll be back again. And it's time to walk away and start over again. I guess it's time to walk away. I'm on a walk away. Have a guy, my walking cane. I'm on a walk away. Well, don't let me stop you. A man confirms what I suspected, that there are no beavers in Ireland. Have you had any confirmation of that? Any comment upon the fact that uh, Geordie claimed to have skinned a beaver in Ireland, whereas no such beaver exists, unless he went, broke into Belfast Zoo and took a knife with a knife between his teeth. So uh, it was probably a duck. Any man who confuses a beaver with a duck needs serious treatment. Some uh, messages here, melt some salt and hot water and pour it into a full watering can, pour it over the snails and lift them at night and drop them into the garden next door. (laughs) (laughs) Chair, that man needs to be very careful what he does with that stoat. A protected species. Ah, you see. Put Geordie's ferret in and get a rat cage. That's all I'm going to talk about ferrets today. Back tomorrow at 10.30. Goodbye.